Here we are at Galactic Dance Studios with um, uh, Andrew Nicolif. Now, Andrew has had quite a history within the Maltese community because Andrew's father is actually George McCullough, who has been involved in stage productions in the Maltese community as well as the young Maltese Australian yes. dancers. So was it this influence that brought on the love of dance? Um, it was part of it. I started dancing when I was six years of age. Um, and yeah, we started the Maltese Australian dancers when I was 12 all the way through to about 14. Um, and yeah, so it was a massive part that influenced me to keep going with what I was doing. Um, uh, yeah. You also had some stage productions? Yes, with, with um, <laughs> the Malta Star of the Sea, which yeah. was um, directed by George Heaney at the mm -hmm. time. Um, and again, I was born into it. So yeah, something that we started when I was yeah, pretty much born. Dad was always on stage and always watching him do that as well. Um, which is a massive influence on yeah, me wanting to get into the entertainment industry. Yeah, despite being so young, Andrew, you're still so young, but you've had a long career yes. in, in dance. Um, if you go back to these, how many years? In, it's in been 30 years now. 30 um, years, or maybe you're not that young. Dance? No. <laughs> uh, so yeah. going back to, what, you know, looking back at these 30 years, highlights of your highlights career of my so career. far. Yep. Um, so the biggest thing I have done was Moulin Rouge, the, um, the movie, um, directed by Baz Luhrmann. And what um, was your and part that? Was that? My, I was uh, one of the dancers mm -hmm. on there. Um, there were, um, a funny story actually, I was one of... Um, would have been three Melbourne dancers that um, got selected out of about 5,000. Wow. Um, and we were, yeah, so flew over to Sydney when I was 18. The uh, rehearsals was my very first day, was, uh, I was 18 years old. Um, and yeah, flew over that there with dad. That would have been dad. overwhelming, wouldn't it? Uh, it was very, very, very <laughs> overwhelming. Um, so I was living on Oxford Street, um, pretty much going from yeah, living with mum and dad to all of a sudden living... Yeah, Independent. <laughs> <laughs> Oxford Street and going to Fox Studios when it first opened wow. up. Um, yeah, it was amazing. So I got to work with Nicole Kidman and um, Baz Luhrmann and Ewan McGregor. Um, Starstruck much or...? Well, I was actually starstruck by Caroline O'Connor more than anyone right. um, when I got on set because she was that? just, oh, she's just an absolute amazing at what she does. Uh -huh. um, saw her in Chicago and saw her in all these musicals, so it was um, a lot easier to relate. And you know, she had achieved everything that I wanted to achieve. Yep. Um, so yeah, that was that was amazing. So Mulan yep. Rouge is definitely a highlight. Yes. Anything else? Um, then we, I moved on to working with um, Judith Lucy on um, one of her shows. Um, it was Colour Me Judith, mm -hmm. um, where we toured around to Adelaide and Sydney and Brisbane. Festivals? Um, festivals, Adelaide Festival, uh -huh. the um, Melbourne Comedy Festival. Right. Um, over to uh, Brisbane, where we did a, a three-week stint there. Um, Sydney, where we did another month there. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, just lots of touring, um, traveling around. And then I was an acrobat on um, the Shakespeare Company's Midsummer Night's Dream. Wow. Um, so yeah, so one of the acrobats on that. And then I've done a, a few stints with Opera Australia mm -hmm. and. Um, yeah, so acrobatics on that as well, as well as dance. What a full so. portfolio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Look, I, I fulfilled everything I wanted to as a, as a performer, um, from live shows to movies to film clips to, yeah. Um, and then I just found teaching was, uh, became a lot more fulfilling for me, so. Uh, mentioning teaching, I know that the first sort of um, teaching experience that you had was um, with underprivileged children. So yeah. tell us more about that. How did that come about? Um, my uh, another big mentor of mine was Tony Bartuccio um, in you know the 90s, and at the time I was this 16 year old who was just up and about and full of confidence as far as you know performing and dancing goes, and never had that hands-on experience with teaching. Mm -hmm. um, and this um, this contract came up for it was a six-week program where I was set the challenge of getting uh, some children, at the time I didn't realise they were underprivileged, I was just told to go in and um, put together a group um, for the St Kilda Festival mm -hmm. um, and I had six weeks to get a two minute routine put together and as I'm going through I was yeah, just teaching and it came up with all these little bits of challenges here and there with um, kids misbehaving <laughs> or and I wasn't understanding why and then finally I sat down with Tony and you know, wondering what was going on I'm like this is really challenging he's like yeah you're working with underprivileged kids um, you know people that have come back from backgrounds of orphans and um, yeah just think, uh, definitely not happy backgrounds no not happy backgrounds yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. and so 
it was one of the most enlightening experiences because once those kids actually got onto the stage and they had this passion up there, it was just um, still something that sits with me and yeah, still strive to get that feeling of um, oh, fulfillment, I guess. Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And was that um, sort of what prompted you to consider opening this school? Um, yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, at the time, I was I still had a full career. I. Um, had the offer to go over to Harvey Bay and open a school there. I also had another offer to be in Northcote to open a school there. Mm -hmm. And I was teaching here and um, in Melton we in at Melton, the time. Yeah. Um, and I just, I loved how um, humble and how raw Melton was. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I just chose to be out in the West essentially at that, that time. There weren't many schools, we were talking 15 years ago. Um, and there were probably about five schools in the whole of the western suburbs, essentially, um, that I knew of anyway. Uh -huh. um, and yeah, just uh, I thought that I could bring in the inner suburbs, the inner city. Um, back then, hip hop wasn't really a thing. Um, contemporary was something that you did in you know mainstream. It was never out this far in the west, especially. Mm -hmm. um, so. I was at the forefront of bringing all that to the suburbs, basically. Um, Tell us more about the school, students and choreographers and dance styles. Yeah, so um, at this at, at our studio here, is again, I was trying to strive to get all of our inner city um, styles out here. So we've got hip hop here with um, Dion Nuku and myself. Um, and then um, we bring in guest choreographers mm -hmm. um, on a, a regular basis. What about the male sort of dancers in the industry where we're so used to seeing female dancers more than male? Yeah. Um, what would you say about that? Um, so growing up as a male dancer, was, um, it wasn't easy, especially um, through the 80s and 90s. Um, it wasn't something that was done quite often. Um, growing up, I was the only male dancer in my class until I was about 16, um, where then I was joined by three other males. Um, and so it was one of those things where I set out in the western suburbs especially to promote that male dancing or male dancers uh, um, can be quite fashionable and quite cool um, and it was only until my peers got older that they realised that oh my god I wish I started dancing mm -hmm. um, so it was always about football or basketball or you know those kinds of sports male. yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, yeah it's just one of those things where I'm just trying to encourage um, that you can love what we do as dancers, um, I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but, um, but be a straight male dancer yeah, essentially. Yeah, yeah, of um, course. Which is... Because uh, they're so typecast. Yeah, so... If yeah, you're exactly. gay, you're going to be into, uh, yeah? So arts. there's yeah, typecast. Yeah, yeah um, and uh, funny enough, even at this school, like we've got three of us that are, are straight male dancers that yeah. all have partners and, you know, getting Why married not? and um, all that. Um, and yeah, so yeah, we are quite unique um, in that sense. Mm -hmm. And it has, it's catching on with all the, the and it's young changed males now. It's changed here. so much. Very much so, yeah. yeah. Um, but past, past what I call the grassroots of uh, dance or of this industry, um, there are, it's become much, much, much bigger, so yeah. much more competitive. And almost glad that I'm not competing for those spots anymore because <laughs> there's some amazing talent in Australia now, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. especially with male dancers and even female dancers. Yeah, it's just yeah. become so much so much um, more acrobatic and so much more um, yeah, competitive essentially. Yeah. Um, now, you know, students nowadays, um, with a difference to when you first started, they've got more opportunities to showcase yeah. their talent here yeah, all over Melbourne and Australia really. Yeah. Um, what are challenges, particular challenges that you come up against when you're trying to make a name for yourself and your school in what's become such a competitive industry? Um, the biggest challenge is staying creative and mm -hmm. not falling into, um, you're trying to be competitive in um, keeping up to date with the styles, but um, still trying to keep your originality um, and what's true to you, mm -hmm. essentially. Um, so I, I, yeah, I just find coming up with uh, different ideas that will stand out, but not be too far out there that people don't understand what you're trying to do. Yeah. Um, that's the biggest challenge. The other one is keeping students humble and respectful, mm. essentially. It's, um, that's m my biggest m motto for me. Um, is to be respectful, be humble, because at the end of the day, um, without those um, characteristics, it's, it's very hard to keep going in this industry. So I find my friends that have had longevity in this industry are very humble and very respectful. Now, you still do also choreography um, outside of this school. Yep. 
Um, what do you prefer? What do you like doing? Choreography or dancing? What um, do you for me, what, what's more rewarding, maybe? Yeah, uh, yeah. for me, it's uh, the choreography and seeing my work still up on stage. Of course, um, yeah. yeah, and seeing like the finished products with it all lit properly mm -hmm. and costuming and um, yeah. So for me, it's it's creation and uh, in all facets of it. So I mix my own music, um, which is you know something that I do a lot of. That's something I was going to ask. So when you're you're planning a choreography, um, what comes first? Music. music? Yeah. Yeah. So music is, yeah, again, growing up in a household, it's always full of music. Um, so that was yeah, probably something that got me into dance as well. Mm -hmm. um, so back then, you know, your Michael Jacksons and um, your Prince and then Dad loves all his Black Sabbath and oh. that's kind of rock and roll <laughs> yeah. sound. Um, and then, yeah, so being able to fuse all those influences mm -hmm. together and create something that's quite unique, I believe. And what about when it comes to movement during choreography? What inspires you? Um, oh, so much. So uh, I'm, I cover the genres of jazz, hip hop, um, contemporary acrobatics, and that's just me personally. Wow, that's um, a lot. So <laughs> yeah, being able to like see how the connection of all these different genres kind of fuse in together. Mm -hmm. Um, and it helps me get a style that's quite um, unique, essentially. Yeah, so it's all different genres, essentially, coming together. Um, so, for example, hip-hop has quite a, a unique um, patterning work. Mm -hmm. um, and so being able to use that kind of pattern work into a, a jazz style of dance um, is quite fun. Um, and, yeah, so that inspires me a lot. And even, like, now, just YouTubing and Facebook and um, watching other American dancers. What about when you're seeing someone else's production and you're sitting there as a choreographer uh, uh, in the audience? Yeah. Do you find that hard? Like, yes, would you extremely. be thinking, oh, I would have done this differently? Yeah. <laughs> um, I just remember graduating from Bartuccio's full time and on our probably our last day of rehearsals, Tony's turned around to us and said, you'll never be able to watch a production <laughs> the same way ever again. Yep. And it was so true. It was only the other day I went to Wizard of Oz, for example, and discussing with my partner about um, you know, what I would have done better um, you know, professional production is, yeah, it's a little bit, it, it's, it's a funny conversation to have, yeah. Um, but yeah, always, always on the lookout. And in the same token, uh, I would give credit to, um, you know, what they've done well, of essentially. Course. Yeah. Um, so it's not always just looking at, you know, what I could do better, but taking in what they've done really well. Um, and this day and age, I'm loving how um, technology is getting really incorporated mm. in the arts um, as far as you know using screens and um, video footage and mm -hmm. lighting mm -hmm. especially yeah definitely yeah. what would you what would be your advice to any of our viewers watching this interview who are actually thinking of maybe starting out in this industry yeah um, I, I find persistence would be the biggest um, the thing that you know you can um, persistence and patience essentially. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, the longer you're in it, the longer you, you push on, the, you know, the easier it becomes, mm -hmm. um, the more doors that open up for you. Um, but yeah, just give it your best, essentially, yeah. So, um, tell me this, when you're on a dance floor, uh, do dancers have to clear the dance floor when yeah. you're actually hitting the dance floor? Uh oh here comes Andrew Mikulip. Yeah, not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, yeah. No, definitely not anymore. Um, it's one of those things now that I do this six days a week, essentially. Um, so when I'm out and about, I yeah, prefer to you sit back and analyse. <laughs> yeah.